shall live by his faith. You got to establish your faith. You could use somebody else's faith as an example, but you got to know the word works when you work the word. How much can you be a witness to other people? How are you going to minister to other people? How are you going to reach the lost if you can't tell them a testimony how God moved when you got in this situation or that situation? Your testimony sometimes will raise them up and draw them to Christ. Amen. For what God did through you. Okay. But you got to seek God's way of doing and being right because the world has a way of doing and looking right but being wrong because the devil does it through deception. Inside of all truth is deception. I mean, inside of all deception is truth because truth gives the deception the power to deceive. That's why the devil uses it that way. He sugarcoats it like he did Eve in the garden. Greetings and welcome to another broadcast of Grow to Go Christian Center. My name is Assistant Pastor Herman Alexander Sr. And today we're going to continue our teaching on the price of obedience, the price of obedience. OK, so I'm going to pray and then we're going to have a praise song for one of our praise team members. And then we're going to get into the teaching of the word. So let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for your word. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Father, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus. We thank you for Holy Spirit. Great is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to minister to these, your people. I pray that revelation knowledge flows freely, unhindered, undistracted, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. For this in Jesus' name, I pray. Satan, I break your powers over the service, over the people. You cannot hinder them from receiving the words and the blessings of God. I bind every spirit of distraction, confusion, division, rebellion, rejection, false doctrine, false revelation, and every evil and wicked hindering spirit that would attempt to disrupt this service or steal from the people in the name of Jesus. I release you demon spirits from your assignments over us. Loose you in the outer darkness, never to return again in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I decrease for your increase. All of you, none of me. I step back so you may step forward. Manifest yourself as the teacher through myself the yielded vessel heavenly father you know us name by name situation by situation we receive in advance by faith a word from you father to take us all to the next level in life and in ministry in jesus name heavenly father we give you all the praise all the honor all the glory for all that will be accomplished and all that will be revealed through the teaching of your word in jesus name and the church said amen, amen and amen all right
Okay, praise the Lord. Thanks, thanks. That was a wonderful song for my choir. We want to thank you for tuning in once again. And we're going to continue our teaching on the price of obedience, the price of obedience. Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you all from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 Once again, the title of the message is The Price of Obedience. Okay. We were looking at uh, the purpose of the message was that to let all believers know that it will cost you a lot to walk in the anointing and the blessings of God once you are born again and that you must give up your ways in exchange for God's way of living a successful Christian life. God has provided it for you, but you have to do it his way and his way is according to his word. And it starts with obedience. Amen. Amen. Our golden objective is that the believer's choice to obey God will be easier than it has been in the past. And that will happen from a close, personal, intimate relationship. See, God wants a close, personal, intimate relationship with you. You need a close, personal, intimate relationship with God. Amen. Now, you must want what God wants. Okay, we've seen that in uh, part one. We also saw that God has created you for a specific purpose. And he has an assignment for you. But you must be in agreement with God's plan for your life and you must seek God to find out what it is. OK, Bible says you have not because you ask not asking you what shall receive. OK, now foundation scripture. Let's let's turn to Isaiah chapter one. Isaiah chapter one, Proverbs three and Proverbs 20. Isaiah chapter one, Proverbs three. In Proverbs 20, let's go over those right quick. We do a quick review on those. Isaiah 119 says, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. In other words, life is choice driven. You must choose. Now, we focus on that word willing. Willing means that your heart is involved in the decision making process. God will never make you. In fact, God can't make you do anything. The devil can't make you do anything. It's the choice. Life is choice driven. So whoever has the greatest influence on you is the direction that you're going to go. Either it's God in his word, the world, which is the devil's way, or that flesh that you have not built up yet. You're going to go in one of those three directions. Amen. Amen. Now. In Acts chapter five, oh, let me say we go to foundation scripture, Proverbs, Proverbs, and we go to Proverbs first before we go to Acts. Proverbs three, verse five and six says, trust in the Lord with how much of your heart, all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So if he's going to direct your path in all of your ways, that means you're talking to him often. This is how the relationship gets built, because you're communicating with him often. If you don't communicate with him with often, then you're bound to make some mistakes. And when you make mistakes, then it's like God saying, I'll help you get out. But if you would came to me in the first place, we could have avoided the delays. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 20. Proverbs chapter 20, 20, 24, it says, man's goings are of who? The Lord. Man's goings are of the Lord. Proverbs 20, 24. It says, how then can a man understand his own way? God said, you don't know what you're doing. I created you. I sent you here. I have a plan for you. So what are you doing? Because I give you direction and it don't make sense. Does that mean to reject it? That's why he says that man's goings is of the Lord. Okay. And God will confirm his word with signs following. But you can't be so in a hurry to get the sign. Amen. Because the scripture says through faith and patience, you inherit the promise. What is faith? Faith is stepping out without having evidence because faith is the evidence. So you step out anyway because God said it. 
Amen. Amen. Now in uh, Acts 5.29, you don't have to turn there. I just, uh, uh, we know in Acts 5.29 when Peter and the apostles was in the temple praying and they got put in jail because the, the uh, king told them not to be preaching in the name of Jesus. And uh, they told him we ought to obey God rather than man. Now we're all familiar with this verse, but when we do things, we always put God to one side and obey men and listen to their words blindly. And God is saying because we have deviated in practicing the truth of obeying God, we cannot gain God's approval. So when he says deviated, deviate means to depart from an established course. So in other words, the word of God is true. So why would we deviate from it? Amen. So when it says because we have deviated in practicing the truth, practicing the truth is how you walk in faith. Because practicing the truth, if the word of God is true and God said we're going over here, then you just go over here. It's not time to reject because you don't have full and complete understanding because faith is stepping out without full and complete understanding, but knowing that God said it, okay? And if you can't say God didn't say it, if you didn't step out and try it, you can't say the word don't work if you haven't worked the word, amen? How can you explain to somebody, I'm not gonna do that because I, that's not God. Well, you have to give the reason why it's not God. Did God tell you not to? No, it's just that the flesh wants to rise up because it don't make sense. The flesh don't want to do nothing spiritual anyway. So that's why you have to have your spirit built up. And you get your spirit built up by staying in the word on a regular basis. You're in the world every day. You need to be in the word every day. Amen. The feeding of your flesh and the feeding of your spirit. But the feeding of your spirit must outweigh the feeding of your flesh. Whoever eats the most will dominate the system of man. Man being the tripod being, spirit, soul, and body. This God never intended for the flesh to lead the system of man. He created us in his image. What is God? He's a spirit. You're a spirit. And he gave you the tools and the ability to stay close to him. He gave you a prayer language. What does it say in uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 4? He that speaketh in unknown tongue edifies himself, builds himself up. So it's like this here. If you edify yourself, you're building yourself up. So you're increasing your power. So therefore, no prayer, no power. Some prayer, some power. More prayer, more power. Strong prayer, strong power. So the choice is yours, amen? amen. Life is choice driven. Now, in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, when it says, look at, uh, 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 trust in the Lord with all your heart. And down in, in verse six, in all your ways acknowledge him. So if we look at, if we do it, do that with all of our heart, and we come to him in all of our ways, then this is how we can live in peace when we do what God says is best rather than what we think is best. Amen, because we just seen in Proverbs 20, 24, how then can a man understand his own way? Amen, God has all the answers. So before you make a, major decision, let's consult God, amen? amen. Okay, in our first point in part one, we looked at you must choose God of the world. So we already said life is choice driven. Let's look at uh, John 10, 10. John 10, 10, I don't think we went there. John 10, 10, everybody knows that pretty good, but let's read it, I'll read it a couple ways. John 10, 10. Who's speaking here? It says, the thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus says, I am come that they may have life and that they may have it, talking about life, more abundantly. So therefore you read it like this. The thief cometh not but for to steal, tend to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might have living in faith every day and that they may, might have it, talking about faith, they may live in victory more abundantly. So this is what he wants you to do, but it's gonna cause you to step out in faith because living in faith and living in victory 
comes from you walking in faith because that's God's way. Amen. Faith is not designed to make sense. That's just God's way. So we don't put it on the scale. Well, this don't make sense. Or it make better sense if we do this. It's not about that. It's about following God. Amen. Amen. Uh, Romans, Romans, Romans 13. Romans 13. Romans chapter 13. I think it's Romans 13. Verse 14, Romans 13, verse 14. It says, but put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. You got to put on Christ. You got to put on Christ. We got to put on Christ. Amen. As one. The Bible says God commands the blessings when we're on one accord. Amen. Amen. Do you want the blessings? Amen. A second point was uh, once you have chosen Jesus, you must begin to renew your mind on a regular daily basis. Can't tell you how important it is, how critical it is that the mind is renewed because otherwise you're gonna walk in the world's ways. Even though you're born again, filled with the spirit, go to a good church, speak in other tongues, but you don't walk in the word, amen. How can you be effective? God needs you as an example, as a person that has changed to the other people. See, God wants to use you to draw other people to Christ. He can't come down on earth and do it himself. The way he established the system, he says, let man have dominion over all the earth. So he can't do anything. God can't do anything in your situation. Amen. Unless you invite him in, you invite him in through prayer. If you don't pray, he not coming, even though he want to come. He can't do it. He'll never violate the, uh, uh, the order that he's put in the earth realm. He's not going to vow. I know, I know they need some help. I'm just going to do it. No, he already says, ask and you shall receive. He said, you have not because you ask not. So he'll watch you cry and bellyache because you didn't ask. The angels, you keep the angels in the unemployment line because you don't say anything. The Bible says the angels hearken to the voice of his word. That means you got to say something. You got to speak his word. When you speak his word, you have to understand and have the revelation that the angels go to work when you speak God's word. Amen. They're ministering spirits for us, right? Amen. And we saw that in Proverbs 4, Luke 11, and Luke 21, where we were talking about the word of God was wisdom, and wisdom is the word of God. So in the word of God is your life. So anything a part of the word of God is your death. And we've seen in uh, Proverbs chapter 8, I believe, those that hate the word of God love death. Life is choice driven. Either you're going to love one and hate the other. Amen. Amen. And we also seen in that third point was you must have a strong desire to please God. Pleasing God must be your priority. And how are we going to do that? Hebrews eleven six says, but without faith is what? Impossible to please him. So you have to walk in faith. You got to learn faith. God, everybody that got born again was given a measure of faith. So it's like a ruler. You can have a 12 foot ruler or you can have a 25 foot ruler or you can have a 12 inch ruler. See, God wants to increase your faith because down the line, we're gonna need some strong faith because as we get closer and closer to the end, the devil gonna be acting a fool and we already see him acting a fool now, amen. So we need some strong faith. So God will put us in situations where we can use our faith so he can get the glory and show us that it was him and he got your back. When Jesus says, I'll never leave you, never forsake you. Well, leaving you is leaving you alone, but forsaking you is leaving you in a bad situation. So God has said, I'll never leave you in a bad situation. But sometimes we get in a situation and it's a faith shaking moment. Even Jesus himself had a faith shaking moment when he's on the cross. He was waiting on God to raise him up. He said, Father, why have you forsaken me? Why have you left me in this bad situation, hanging on the cross, bleeding, blood, bugs flying all around me, bugs? Wouldn't that be awesome? I mean, a terrible thing. Bugs crawling in your nose and you can't get them out because you're on the cross with your hands nailed to a piece of wood. Amen. 
that's 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 rough. That's rough. That was the worst death back in the, the, those days. Amen. Uh, fourth point on point one was your lifestyle must be a life, lifestyle of faith. We saw in Romans 1, 16 and 17, the just shall live how? By faith. Habakkuk 2, 4 said the just shall live by his faith. You got to establish your faith. You could use somebody else's faith as an example, but you got to know the word works when you work the word. How much can you be a witness to other people? How are you going to minister to other people? How are you going to reach the lost if you can't tell them a testimony how God moved when you got in this situation or that situation? Your testimony sometimes will raise them up and draw them to Christ. Amen. For what God did through you. And then James 122 says, but be doers of what? The word and not here is only deceiving your own self. You can't even blame it on the devil if you didn't do what the word says. How you know the word don't work if you don't do the word? Because you have other people that they don't follow the word. They say, oh, that was, uh, what they say? Oh, that's the white man's God. Oh, that was written by man. No, that was written through, by Holy Spirit, through the hand of man. Okay, so you gotta know, you gotta tell them that. They don't know, amen? amen? You gotta tell them that. Now, in summary of part one, You've just learned that once you have received the salvation that was freely given to you, there must be a total change in the way you live. It will cost you time, effort, and a willing heart to obey God by renewing your mind on a regular, daily basis. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Now, God isn't going to make you, but you must choose to put on the new man. Okay, that's where we left off. Turn to Colossians chapter 3 in Ephesians 4. Colossians chapter 3 in Ephesians 4. See, the reason why God don't make you because he wants you to do it from the heart. Amen. The Bible says in, uh, I think it was Psalms or Proverbs, God knows the intentions of the heart. You can say anything with your mouth, but what is your heart saying? That's what he looks at. He looks at what the heart is saying. Colossians 3, let's start at uh, verses 1 through 10. Colossians 3, 1 through 10. It says, if you've been then been risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. For you are dead and your life is hidden with who? Christ was God. So if your life is hidden with Christ, if it's hidden with Christ, who you need to spend time with? Christ. Well, you can't do it physically, but spiritually you hang out in his Bible, in his word, you're hanging out with Christ. Because this is a gospel of who? Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Mortify or put to death, therefore, your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience, in the which you also walk sometime when you lived in them. So we all came from that. Verse 8, but now you also put off these, all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. That's a big one there. You got to learn how to talk. Amen. amen. Verse 9, lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. Let me say that again. Lie not one to another, seeing that who? You. Say me. Amen. Say I have. I have put off the old man with his deeds, and I have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So you got work to do, amen? We got work to do. We have to put on the new man. God gives us the tools, but we have to want to do it, amen? Okay, Ephesians chapter 4, drop down to verse 17. 17. It said, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you hereafter walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness. Lasciviousness having no restraints, having no control. To work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in who? Jesus. That you put off concerning the former conversation. The old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and what kind of holiness? True holiness. So we have to put on a new man. We have to put on a new man. Okay. And how are we going to do that? By spending time with God, spending time in his word and being a doer of the word, not a hearer only. Isn't this the doer ministry? Amen. Amen. All right. Now, in part two, let's go to part two. And we're going to start with, we're going to look at what our obedience is going to cost us, what our obedience is going to cost. So the first point is, write this down, you will have to give up some relationships forward slash family and friends family and friends you will have to give up some relationships forward slash family and friends because see they can hinder you obedience because they'll be like the devil oh if I was you I would do this if I was you I, 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 I would ain't that how Satan got kicked out the kingdom saying, I, I, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And God said, Shoo. Jesus said he saw Satan get kicked out like lightning. Couldn't you imagine Satan up there talking, yeah, man, I'm going to do this, man, I'm going to do that. And all of a sudden, bam, he just disappeared. And they was like, man, wasn't that Lucifer over there? Where, 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 where he go? Man, I, 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 if I was you, I'd do this. I would do this. But see, you ain't me. And you can't, you can't let them change you. You let the word of God change you, amen? Now, you must change the relationships that you have with those of the world. And some of the people that are in the kingdom that don't live by the word of God. Because there are some people that don't live by the word of God, even though they're born again. They still living like the world. And that's on them because God is not going to make you. Life is choice driven. You have to be a doer of the word. You got to want to change. Not just go to church because we're going to church and we just go back home and then you go back to the sinning. Amen. The Bible says be a doer of the word, not a hearer only. Amen. Deceiving your own self. Amen. Amen. Okay. I ain't going to be in a hurry on this because we got to get this here. Turn to 2 Corinthians 6. 2 Corinthians 6. See, if we don't make these changes then our obedience is, is hindered. We're going to be misled by the devil and influenced by our worldly friends and relatives. And the Bible even tells you don't be taking advice from somebody that's worldly. Amen? Amen. They're not hearing from God. They're hearing from their flesh. And they're telling you, I, I, if I was you, I'd do this. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14 through 18. It says, be ye not unequally yoked together with who? Unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteous? And what communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part, he, part has he that believes with an infidel? You can't hang out with unbelievers because they're, the devil will try to use them to pull you back down. Verse 16, and what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. So let's tell you right there, be separate and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you and I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. Amen. So that's God instruction. You got to make some changes in the relationships. Now let's dig a little deeper. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. Three. Second Thess three. Thess 
2 Thess 3, starting verse 6. It says, now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother. That means those that are saved and those that are not saved that walks disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. For yourselves know how you ought to follow us. For we behave not ourselves disorderly among you, and neither did we eat any man's bread for nothing, but wrought with labor and travail night and day that we might not be chargeable to any one of you. In other words, they didn't want to be a burden. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example to you to follow us. So people are looking at you, you gotta be an example. In other words, if you're not walking in righteousness, why would they go to your church? Amen. 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 For even when we were with you, this we command you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Anybody know any busybodies? Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But you, brother, be not weary in well-doing. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him, no association with him, that he may be ashamed. Verse 15, yet count him not as an enemy but admonish him as a brother. In other words, warn him. Okay? You warn him. You don't count him the enemy because the only enemy we got is the devil. And the lust of the flesh try to rise up. He just, see, sometimes the devil got to him before God did. Because, see, God only can get through people, through people. That's why it says you're an example. Amen? Okay, let's go Psalm, Psalm chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1. We got to give up. It's going to cost some relationships. Uh, Psalm 1. Let's look at verse 1 and 2. It says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the who? The ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is where? in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he do what? Meditate day and night, day and night. You're keeping it before you, you're keeping it before you, keeping it before you. Because see, meditation kind of precedes your answer. Meditation tells you where you are, where you don't need to be, and which direction you need to go. That's why you have to meditate day and night. Where you are, where you don't need to be, and which way to go. When you meditate on a word, it's telling you what the word is saying, what it's not saying, and how to apply it. What the word is saying, what it's not saying, and how to apply it. Meditation precedes the answer. Okay, the next thing that is going to cost us, we must give up bad habits and character flaws. Now, you had to talk to God about these. You have to meditate on them as the Holy Spirit gives them to you. You know how when we take communion, the Bible tells us to examine yourself. You got to examine yourself. You know what you're doing. You know what you're not doing. You know what you need to be doing. Amen. All right. Now, you must change all your ways to live a righteous and holy life. You must change all your ways. Because uh, what is that? Second Corinthians 5, 17 says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature old things have passed away all things are new and first part of 18 says and all things are of god so if you're doing something that's not of god you need to make the adjustment amen, amen. god knows your heart so are you really trying or are you putting it off and putting it off putting it off okay now we see that point was you must give up bad habits and character flaws let's go to first john first john First John in the back of the book, chapter five. First John. First John, chapter five. First John, chapter five. Drop down to verse 17. First John 5, 17 says, For 
all unrighteousness is what? Sin. And there is a sin not to death. We know that whosoever is born of God sins not. That's because your spirit can't sin. Whenever you commit a sin, you're sinning out of your flesh because you're letting your flesh lead the system. Verse 18, we know that whosoever is born of God sins not, but he that is begotten of God keeps himself and that wicked one touches him not. And we know that we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, do what? Keep yourself from idols. Keep yourself from idols. Things that look like God. See, in Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye what? First, his kingdom and his righteousness. All those other things will be added. So what are we seeking? The things that we want. We're seeking God first and we'll get the things that we want and we need to desire. Okay. But you got to seek God's way of doing and being right. Because the world has a way of doing and looking right but being wrong. Because the devil does it through deception. Inside of all truth is deception. I mean, inside of all deception is truth because truth gives the deception the power to deceive. That's why the devil uses it that way. He sugarcoats it like he did Eve in the garden. He told Eve, did God say you would, you would die? He said, oh man, you ain't gonna die. You're just gonna be like God knowing good and evil. So she looked at, oh man, I'm gonna be wise if I go ahead and eat this fruit. She didn't, see, he, he avoided, he made her look at being wise versus disobeying God. And she stepped in it, and that's why we're here today. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's go to... No, we already looked at that. We look at Ephesians 4 and Colossians 3 where it talks about putting on the new man. Okay. So you got to give up your bad habits and character flaws, putting on the new man and changing your ways. Okay, our next point. You must give up the leading and the lust of the flesh. You must give up the leading and the lust of the flesh. Turn to Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter eight. This right here may get a little squirmy, y'all. May get a little squirmy. Time you talk about the flesh, the flesh wanna rise up. Okay, you must change your lustful desires of the flesh unto walking and being led by Holy Spirit. You must change your lustful desires of the flesh unto walking and being led by Holy Spirit. That's gonna take some time, but starting is the main thing, amen? amen. You gotta break the ice. Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter eight, we just started verse one. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ. Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Capital S talking about who? Holy Spirit. Verse two, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, Holy Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. So in other words, you always please in the flesh because you're walking by the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So you have to decide who you wanna please. Now, there's always going to be that temptation there, but as we build ourselves up by eating the word, eating the word, eating the word, praying in the spirit, praying in the spirit. Now, I said it earlier, no prayer, no power. Some prayer, some power. More prayer, more power. Strong prayer, strong power. Amen? Verse 6, for the be carnally minded is death. 
carnally minded is fleshly minded. But to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. Don't we want life and peace? That's what God wants for us, life and peace. Amen. Verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. A carnal mind can't be uh, subject to God because it's about the flesh. See, the flesh doesn't desire to do something, whether it's of God or of the devil, where it's right or wrong, whether it's true or false. The flesh just wants satisfaction, just want to be satisfied. Just overeat, just stay up all night. Not getting the sleep that you want to get. All kinds of things. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about. Doing whatever you want to do. You come to church, go home, and then do what you want to do. Go back. No change. No commitment. No submission. You're just going through the motion. That's because feeding too much flesh. And you have to watch the TV, too. And, you know, God gave me a revelation, too. Because uh, my wife wanted the big screen TV. And I'm cool with that. Big screen TV. It's cool, baby. It's cool, baby. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. She's looking at me like, it's cool. But I was just looking at the TV one day and I noticed when you have a big screen TV, it kind of pulls you to it because you got this big screen and you, you see a little bit more than you did when you had the regular screen. That big screen TV, you got to watch that big screen TV because it will, it's just like a magnetism. You have to turn that thing off when you're doing something. And after you completed your chores, then turn it on. Because while you're doing your chores and you're looking at TV, you be doing something. And you know they always had that music in the background. <clears throat> and you, oh man, check that out. Oh man, you folding clothes. Oh, check that out. <laughs> you got to watch that big screen TV. And see, the bigger the screen, the more pull it has. <laughs> so you got to watch it. Got the 30, I mean, what they got, the 50 inches and 75 inches? Yeah, yeah. Who, who got a 75? Who got a 75? Come on, don't lie. I know, we got one. <laughs> we just bought it. She wanted 75. I got, okay, baby, I get you 75. But I was noticing that sucker was turning this thing off. Because it will pull you, it will pull you. Amen, amen. Okay, which scripture we leave that with? Oh, verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it, it, it is not subject to the law of God, neither can be. So then they that are in the flesh, what happens? They cannot please God. If you're in the flesh, you can't please God. You can't please God if you're in the flesh. Verse 9. But this is us. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if. On the condition that so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Amen. So he's going to make a life. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, what happens? You shall die. That's a promise from God. But if you through the spirit do mortify or put to death or kill the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So God is recognizing you're my son because you're being led by my word. You're being led by my spirit. Okay. Now, like I said, it takes time. It's called spiritual growth. Spiritual growth. Amen. Turn to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians 6. God knows the intentions of the heart. He knows if you're really trying or you're just belly aching, just saying it. it sounds spiritual. Galatians chapter 6. Drop down to... Verse seven and eight, it says, be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap what? Corruption. Corruption is death. Death is separation. For he that, but, but he that sows to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Life everlasting. So, like I said earlier, life is choice driven. If you want to 
be more obedient to God, we got to sow to our spirit. Amen. Because see what happens when you get ready to go against God, Holy Spirit will give you that warning, that uneasy feeling. What you're about to do is wrong. What you're about to say is wrong. Don't do it. You got to be sensitive to that law. It's called that discernment. You have to have the discernment. And you get that discernment by staying in the word. Staying in the word because see the, uh, uh, the, the word takes root and produces that fruit. Amen. And that's what we need. Amen. I need another clock too because that wasn't too fast. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. First Peter. Go to First Peter. First Peter. First Peter. You must give up the leading and the lusting of the flesh. First Peter chapter four. First Peter four. First Peter four. Verses one and two, first Peter four, one and two. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time, where? In the flesh, to the lust of men, but to the will of God. As we get closer to the end, we need to make sure we're always focusing on the will of God. The will of God. That's where we want to go. The will of God. Okay. Okay. Our next point. It's going to touch you a little bit too. We must give up. Not give up, but it's focused on hobbies. The time you spend doing them. The time you spend doing them. So in other words, we're saying you must manage the time closely, wisely that you spend doing your hobbies so that the hobbies won't have you. It's OK to go fishing. It's OK to play a little golf. It's OK to do certain things, but we have to manage our time wisely. Otherwise, we'll spend too much time doing it. You know, you got to say, OK, I'm going to go shoot for two hours and then I'm gone. Been to go fishing for about six hours. You know, I got to fish a little bit. You know? <laughs> I put a time on it. I still put a time on it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but no, no. My wife would tell you, I used to go fishing three or four days a week. All day. All day. Three or four days. Well, not all day. I went to work. I get off work. I mean, I, I leave out the house going to work. She said, you going fishing? I said, no, I ain't going. You know, sun be out and stuff like it's shining. And you let it like, look like it's going to rain. Overcast. See, overcast looks like early in the morning all day. And I love those days because the fish bite like crazy all those days. And I, I get off work. I said, babe, I'm, I'm running to the lake. She said, you said you wasn't going? I said, no, but they're hitting us. It's overcast. Overcast, yeah. yeah. So I, I just love that overcast. You know, overcast is like early in the morning all day. And it's lovely. You got the sun beating down on you. You ain't sweating and stuff like that. But them overcast, overcast days to a fish because, see, fish, they kind of hit early in the morning. You heard about that early in the morning, late in the evening? Well, early in the morning all day, they're going to hit all day. And I'm going to be out there all day. <laughs> but yeah, but it, it's still like going three or four days a week. I really cut it down. A lot of time, I don't get out maybe twice a month. You know, so I gave it that up. But you know, because I did that, God bless me when I do go fishing, I catch them in abundance like that. So I have more than enough. And um, I usually pray that, you know, me and the guys that go uh, together, we always pray that we catch them in abundance, not to be greedy for ourselves, but also to be, be a blessing to others. Because some people like fishing, don't go fishing, or they can't get out there. You know what I'm saying? Some women, they like fish and don't have a husband to take them fishing, or they don't go out there. So, you know, some of the people in here, I have blessed them with bags of fish. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. So that's it's a good thing, but we just got to manage our time, okay? Uh, let's look. Uh, why are we back here? First John, first John chapter two. First John chapter two. First John two. First John two. Drop down to verse 15. It says, love not the world. Wait a minute. God said love everybody. Love not the world. Talking about the world system. The world system is of the devil. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 
for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father, but is of the world. Verse 17, and the world passes away and the lust thereof, but he that does the will of God abides, how long? Forever. So that's what we're gonna focus on, the will of God. First Corinthians 14, first Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14. We just got to watch, manage our time in our hobbies and doing other things because time will get away. How many people know the clock don't stop? Amen. 1 Corinthians 14, 40. It says, let how many things? Let all things be done how? Decently and in order. So we have to Manage our time when we out there doing hobbies and stuff like that. Amen. All right, then. The clock says zero and I'm out of time. I thank you for yours. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I bless you. Amen. Amen. Now, we've been talking about the price of obedience and we know it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you time and effort. But we have to start, first of all, giving our life to Jesus. That's the first part of obedience we need to do. Come to the kingdom. The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth should not perish, but have everlasting life. So the choice is yours. So if you never confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you never came into the kingdom of God, repeat this prayer after me and everybody here. We're going to be on one accord with you. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. You said in your word, if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus was raised from the dead, I would be saved. I believe in my heart and I'm confessing with my mouth that Jesus is the son of God and he died for my sins and he was raised from the dead for my justification. And I receive him right now as my Lord and Savior. You also said in your word that if I would ask for Holy Spirit, you would give him to me. So I'm asking you now to fill me with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come inside me. Lead me. Guide me. Anoint me. Empower me and direct my life so I may live for God. Reveal to me God's plan and purpose for my life here on earth. Thank you, Father, for saving me and for filling me with Holy Spirit and for revealing to me by faith your plan for my life here on earth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, we believe you got born again, you're filled with the Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit will minister to you if you take some time. The Bible says in Psalm 46:10, be still and know that I'm God. So he will minister to you if you minister to him. He will reveal to you your creative purpose. It's more to just being saved, saying, okay, I'm saved. No, he has placed gift, qualities, and talents in each one of us. And he must reveal it to you because he's holding you accountable for doing it. So if you don't know what it is, pray and ask him and he will minister to you. OK, and he'll confirm it to you with signs, Father. Because, see, I, what I think the thing I know about God, whatever he called you to do, he's already placed a desire in you to do it. So meditate on some things that you've been doing, things that you've been saying and talking about, just things that you just kind of think about. What do you really like? as it relates to ministry. What do you really like about church? And he will reveal it to you. And if you don't know what it is, our pastor always taught us, just get busy doing something in the kingdom and God will draw you to what it is that he created you for, amen? All right, praise the Lord. Thanks again for viewing. And we wanna uh, uh, pray, a, pray a benediction over you. But also if God moves on your heart to sow a seed to the ministry and you led to sow a seed, sow a seed. And we 
we already stand in agreement with your hundredfold return on your giving. As the Bible says, give and it shall be given. Another promise of God, okay? But you won't know it unless you do it. Amen? You step out in faith. So, Father, I thank you and praise you for your word. Thank you, Father, for those that are viewing, Father. I just pray, Father, that those that need a healing, Father, that you heal them. You said Jesus took their infirmities, bore their sickness, and by his stripes they were healed. You thank you, Father, for those that need deliverance, Father. You said you would deliver us out of all trouble, Father. You said that those that live godly will suffer persecution, but you deliver us out of all our trouble. So, Father, those that need delivering, I pray, ask and thank you, Father, that you have delivered them. Those that need a financial blessing, I pray that you open doors of opportunity to pour those finances into them in Jesus' name. And I thank you and give you all the praise, honor, and glory, Father, for blessing your people in obedience in Jesus' name. Now, the God of peace, the Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. According to Hebrews 13 20 21. Keep God first in your life and he'll bless you like never before. I see you on the next broadcast. Love you. Bye bye. Amen and amen.